when you first meet a mathematical object and would like to understand it a little bit better, uh, the first type of question you ask is what are the sub-objects? So when you see a vector space, you'd like to understand what subspaces are. When you first define a group, you'd like to know what its subgroups are, etc. So we're going to play the same game with simplicial complexes. So if K is a simplicial complex on vertex set V, here is the main definition. A subset L of K. So remember, K contains uh, subsets of V. So this is some subcollection of the subsets that lie in K. Is called a subcomplex of K if it is also a simplicial complex. Now, you have to be a bit careful. Um, let me say uh, what, what, what I mean by simplicial complex. I mean that if tau is an L and sigma is a subset of tau, then sigma must also be an L. Now, there's a bit of a subtlety here, which is that in general, the vertex set of L is allowed to be smaller than v. Which is to say that it is not necessary to include all the vertices. You have to include some, because if uh, L is a uh, subset of K that happens to be a simplicial complex, that in particular cannot be empty, um, because that was part of the definition of simplicial complex. So that means it contains at least some subset and then all of its vertices that, that are in that subset have to be in there, but we're not requiring all the vertices from V to make it to L. Um, the best way to understand this or any other definition is to take a look at several examples. Um, so the, the, the first family of interesting examples that you can get is just from looking at graphs, which are um, the most familiar simplicial complexes. So subgraphs. Of a given graph. Um, so here I will draw a fairly uh, non trivial graph, maybe with some funny edges. There, there. Okay. And now you take any graph that lives inside. And now, what do, what do I mean by a graph that lives inside? Uh, you're allowed to include any vertex you want. So maybe I include these. But the minute you include an edge, you must include all the vertices that, uh, that the two vertices that touch that edge. So if I want this edge here to be part of my subcomplex, then I'd better include that vertex as well. So if you look at the chosen things that are in gray, maybe I'll add a few edges to keep things exciting. Um, if you look at the chosen vertices and edges, there's that one at the top left, this, that, this, and this vertex. So this is a perfectly good example of a subcomplex. Uh, there's L sitting inside K. Of course, we could have just chosen all the vertices, uh, and that would have been a perfectly good example as well. Um, another family of examples comes from looking at uh, solid and hollow simplices. So for each K bigger than one, the hollow K simplex is a subcomplex of the solid k simplex. And in this particular case, it turns out that the vertex sets are, uh, are the same. So let's do the two easy to draw examples, k equals 1 and k equals 2. Uh, for k equals 1, what I'm saying is that this is a subcomplex of that which makes sense. And for k equals 2, we're saying that this is a subcomplex of that, which again makes sense. Uh, you have two simplicial complexes and one 
sits inside the other. Of course, um, maybe uh, we should end this uh, series of examples with uh, the silliest example, uh, which I don't think offers too much enlightenment about uh, the structure of subcomplexes, which is every, um, not every, but you know, K is its own subcomplex. Um, and maybe um, just to really drive the point home, we should see a non-example as well. So what would it take to find um, a non-subcomplex, a subcollection of simplices that's not a subcomplex? And I think we can do it just with um, just with this K here. Um, if you took the three edges, that is a subset, but this is not a subcomplex. Similarly, if you forgot about the zero and the one simplices and just looked at uh, the, the triangle without anything else, this is also a subset, but not a subcomplex. And the reason uh, for both is the same. You can find simplices um, whose uh, whose subsets are not present. So they're not simplicial complexes in their own right. Therefore, they cannot possibly be subcomplexes of K. Okay. Um, so if someone, uh, if you're walking down the street and someone puts a gun to your head and says, well, I have this subset of simplices of K, quick, uh, what's... Uh, how do I make this into a subcomplex? I think the answer is fairly straightforward. You look at all those simplices, you look at all the smaller simplices and start throwing them in until there are no, uh, you know, you don't find any simplex with a smaller simplex missing. Now this sounds fairly straightforward, so we should just define it. Given a subset K prime of simplices in K, its closure is the smallest subcomplex of K that contains K prime. So in this bad example that we just saw, uh, of the three edges, uh, which, are, which is not a subcomplex, the way you'd make it a subcomplex, so this would be our K prime, um, the smallest simplicial subcomplex that you can get of K that contains K prime, well, look, it has to at least have these three edges. And the minute you have those three edges, you're forced to include all the boundary vertices. So this L, which is an honest subcomplex, this is the closure of K prime. Okay, so just throw in all the smaller simplices and you're in, you're in good shape. Okay, now um, the final definition of this chapter, uh, of this lecture rather, is uh, the notion of a filtration, which is what you get if you have a string of subcomplexes starting from something tiny going all the way up to K. So let's define that. A filtration of K, and I'll say of length N, is a nested sequence of strictly increasing subcomplexes. So it's usually written something like F1K, subset of F2K, subset all the way, FNK, and this last step had better equal K. Um, so strictly increasing means that FIK cannot equal FI plus 1K for any I.
So all of these subsets have to be strict. So there's no equality, except at the end, what where fnk is exactly equal to k. So uh, as with everything else, I think it's best to just see uh, an illustration of a filtration. So uh, I don't want to make life too unnecessarily complicated. So n should be small and k should be uh, k shouldn't contain a billion simplices because otherwise I'll be here all day drawing it and you'll get bored. So maybe the thing to do is just have a few small steps um, and I'll draw it in, in some panels here. So here's an example filtration. Uh, one, two, three, four. Okay, bored already. So let's stop at five steps. So there's going to be some simplicial complex F1K. None of these can be empty, and as you go from left to right, uh, things should be getting larger. So let's start with just three vertices. Uh, I don't know this one. I don't like that one. Um, let's start with, okay, this one, this one, and this one. So there are just three vertices, and that's the full simplicial complex um, at, at stage one of the filtration. So that's F1K. Um, and so what has to happen in F2K is at least these three vertices have to survive. So I'll, I'll put them in gray because they're old now. Um, and, and the new things that, that show up, um, let's say, are these three new vertices. And that's it. Okay, so now we have six vertices, still a simplicial complex, still bigger than F1K. So, so far we're good. Okay, now in step three, we must contain at least these six vertices. And we could add more vertices if we wanted to, but let's add a few edges. Let's say this downward pointing triangle. So we added three edges. And again, is this a simplicial complex? Yes, it is. In fact, it's a graph, so it's a one-dimensional simplicial complex. And is it bigger than the thing to the left? Yes, so, so far we're good. Um, now we import all of this into the next stage and add a few more edges. Okay, and just for fun, I'll throw in a new two simplex as well. So maybe maybe the guy at the top. So these are all new. Okay, so at the final stage, we have to contain everything we had last time which is now getting larger and larger and larger, but we drag it along. All these uh, vertices and edges were there, and uh, this two simplex was there, and let's say we add uh, two other two simplices, this one and that one. Okay, well, that looks like a fun uh, final simplicial complex to end on. So this is uh, an example of a filtration. Okay, that's all for this lecture, so see you in a bit.